Hey, what's up guys? Joker here. Today we are finally going to be getting our first look at the newly released NVIDIA RTX 2070. I've got the Founders Edition right here, which we're going to be taking a look at here in this video. I'm going to be comparing it up against the likes of the RTX 2080, the GTX 1080 as well as Vega 64, because going into this, I kind of thought the 2070 would basically just be a GTX 1080 in the same way that we saw with the 1080 Ti pretty much being an RTX 2080. So that was a matchup that I definitely wanted to see and I wanted to throw Vega 64 in there as well since that competes so closely with the GTX 1080. So those are the cards that we're going to be taking a look at here in this video. But first I did want to take a look at the Founders Edition RTX 2070 because, because it's not exactly the same as the 2080 and the 2080 Ti, which we already took a look at. I mean, just looking at the front of the card, you might think to yourself, hey, Joker, that's pretty much the same looking card, but it's actually shorter for starters. So the 2070 is coming in at nine inches long, while the 2080 and 2080 Ti were both 10 and a half inches long. So it's one and a half inches shorter than both of those cards. Also, the power connector on here is actually not on the front-facing part of the card where it would be installed in your system, but it's actually around on the side. And it's a single 8-pin power connector, just like the GTX 1080. So, very interesting that they decided to move the power connector over to the side. That could help in certain situations with case uh, cable management, um, maybe small form factor builds, since this is a little bit shorter. Might work out better for some people. And just like the 2080 and 2080 Ti, very sexy looking cooler here. I really do like the new redesign from NVIDIA. Um, they've kept the back plate on here, so they didn't they didn't ditch that or anything since it's a slightly lower modeled card, even though uh, it's six hundred dollars. And you know, I really still feel like the, like this card. I feel like should be around like maybe four hundred. Um, you know, based on traditional pricing and where they've kind of you know targeted things. But uh, yeah, six hundred bucks. Uh, pfft. I guess we'll find out when we get into the performance if it's really going to be worth it. Coming around to the back side of the card, again, shaking things up a little bit in comparison to the previous touring cards we looked at. Um, again, they are making the return here with USB Type-C, so that is there if you want to use it with VR. Very nice to have those. We've got two DisplayPort connectors as well, and also HDMI. And the return, the triumphant return, some might even say of the DVI connector, which was completely absent on the other touring cards that we took a look at last month. So if you were waiting for a card to come with DVI, you may now proceed to rejoice as it is here on the RTX 2070. In terms of specs, it is really kind of looking like a cut down RTX 2080s. It's going to have 2,304 CUDA cores while the 2080 has 2,944 CUDA cores, and a lot of the other specs are pretty much the same. Still 256-bit memory bus capable of 448 gigabytes per second, although this guy is going to have a lower TDP, as you would expect, with only one 8-pin power connector at 180 watts, while the 2080 is 210 watts. The cooler here, once again, from NVIDIA is working pretty well. I went ahead and ran it on the Heaven Benchmark at max settings for over an hour, and when I came back, it was hovering around 68 degrees Celsius, and when I was benchmarking it, that's what I saw tr pretty much through all the benchmarks I was seeing, uh, was between about 60 and 70 degrees Celsius on just the normal fan curve, and I did, of course, have the power limit slider increased, increased all the way to the right with this card so that it can get the most stable clocks for all of our testing, which were done at stock speeds, but I did mess around with overclocking, and just like the other touring cards and Pascal previously, these can definitely hit between 2000 to 2100 megahertz, and your mileage might vary there based on cooling, and you know, how much you want to get in there and tweak voltages, and things of the like, but just running on the Founders card and not doing anything crazy with voltage, just increasing the power limit and, you know, adjusting around the core clocks and memory clocks, I was able to get this up just a little over 2,050 megahertz and the memory I was able to increase by 500 megahertz, which is the same thing I saw on the 2080 and the 2080 Ti. So we're going to get into all the benchmarks here, the average is FPS and the average FPS in the 1% low at 1080p. 1440p as well as 4k but first I want to let you know the test system I'm using here which is going to be the last time you see this test system getting used here on the channel before upgrading to the 9900k later this week I am running here an i7 7700k at 4.9 gigahertz along with 16 gigabytes of G Skill Trident Z memory which is clocked at 3200 megahertz and of course I'm using the latest drivers here 
from AMD and NVIDIA. The NVIDIA driver was a press driver, which numerically is a little bit lower than what is actually available right now publicly. So it was 416.33, and the latest public driver is actually 416.34, but it was not compatible with the 2070. It just wouldn't let me install it. So I had to use the press driver, which as I said, was 416.33. For AMD cards, I was using their latest public driver for the Vega 64 card, and that was 18.10.1. And we did include some uh, some of the newer games here that maybe we didn't get a chance to take a look at on the previous Turing uh, testing here, and those things like Assassin's Creed Odyssey, uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, as well as Call of Duty Black Ops 4, which obviously I tested Black Ops 4 over the weekend, but I wasn't able to share with you guys the performance at that time on the RTX 2070, but now we can go ahead and definitely do that. And overall, when it comes to the side-by-sides, the 2070 is trailing a significant margin um, behind the 2080. So it definitely seems like there's a de decent amount of difference there between those two cards. But when it comes to the other t to the other cards here, um, the 1080 and the 2070 definitely trade blows in some games. They could be really neck and neck in some situations, while other games the gap is just larger um, than 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 others. It's 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 kind of a little bit of a back and forth here. Some games you're just seeing a bigger gap. Um, than you are in others, but in others, the 1080 is right there sitting along with it, and in some games, I even saw Vega 64 edging out the 2070, but it was only really in a few select titles, so I guess it has its place in the market. It's not as close as what we saw with the 2080 and the 1080 Ti, the way that those cards were like just like two to three FPS bet between each other in pretty much every single game. That was not exactly the case here with the 2070, as, uh, yeah, it, it's, a, it's a decent amount better than the 1080, but probably at the end of the day, uh, still not going to be really worth the extra cost, depending on what you find them for, really. Because right now, the 1080s are selling for around $500 to $520. I think they should be maybe be a little bit less than that realistically, but they're still recovering from the whole GPU mining thing and um, the supply that is av that is out there. I did see some cards for 520. The same thing was true with Vega 64. I saw one variant for 520. I saw another for 600 while all of the others were pretty much out of stock. So there's not a ton of stock available on the 1080 or the Vega 64 right now. But, you know, when it comes to price to performance, I think they might still be a better buy if you can get them for anywhere from like $100 to $200 cheaper than the RTX 2070 because this card at $600 is just, um, I think it's a little difficult to recommend. You could probably even find 1080 Ti's for that price. You might be able to find a used 1080 Ti on eBay for like 600 bucks. So if you could find that, definitely that would beat this because that competes with the 2080. So yeah, it's, it's going to be a little bit of a tough card. You're going to have to kind of make the call for yourself. Um, obviously, it's got Tensor Cores and RT Cores, which it will be able to leverage eventually once the uh, Windows update gets fixed and we can actually start testing games with that. Obviously, I didn't have any any testing for uh, RTX or DLSS in here because there's no games running it yet. We haven't really got the Windows update yet because they had some issues with that. So we're going to have to hold off a little bit longer, but we'll definitely revisit this card when we do have some RTX and DLSS games that are not just tech demos being provided out by NVIDIA, which we've already looked at at length with the 2080 and the 2080 Ti. So we'll go into the average FPS and the 1% lows now here. We'll start off at 1080p and we'll work our way all the way up to 4K resolution. And if you guys want to see me go back and do an ultra wide video with the RTX 2070, let me know down in the comments below. And you can see here that at 1080p, the RTX 2070 is putting in a very strong performance and trading blows with the likes of the 1080 and the Vega 64. Obviously, as I said, doing better in some titles compared to others. Uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey was the toughest game that we had running here uh, at Ultra Settings, but, I mean, you guys know from my performance review, that game was just really, really taxing. Um, and Vega 64 was the only card that ended up with an average below 60 FPS at 1080p, while the uh, t the RTX 20... I, keep, I always keep getting GTX and RTX mixed up. The RTX 2080 ended up averaging 65 FPS versus the 60 FPS of the 1080. So only a 5 FPS difference there. Other games, as I said, a lot closer than others. So yeah, those are the 1080p average FPS numbers. I'll go ahead and show you 
the 1% lows now here. And if you, I'm going to really go over every single one of these graphs here in, in great detail because there's so much information, so many games tested and all of that. But, you know, definitely go ahead and pause and go back if you want to look through any of these numbers. We've got the 1440p averages here as well, of course. The 2070 is definitely looking like a capable 1440p card, as you would expect, just like the GTX 1080 and Vega 64 are, as uh, it really kind of goes head-to-head -head with those. So 1440p, 1080p, both definitely doable with the RTX 2070. I mean, with something like Assassin's Creed Odyssey, that's really demanding and probably Ghost Recon Wildlands as well, which is not here in this testing, but it notoriously runs horrible, uh, just like Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Something, something like that you might want to play down at high settings, but all the other games I tested here, Ultra Settings was not an issue. Um, you know, 1% lows and pretty much all these games is doing really well. Uh, 4K is definitely another story. There's only going to be a small handful of titles at 4K that the 2070 can really run at max settings and others. It's definitely going to fall behind significantly. Um, I really wouldn't recommend this card for 4K gaming. Uh, you would definitely want to go for one of its bigger brothers instead, uh, especially when it comes to ultra settings. You're definitely going to have to lower down some some, uh, some graphical options if you do want to use this card uh, for 4K, as is evident once again in the 1% in the lows, significantly lower um, than what we saw at the averages, so definitely going to be a card that would struggle with that high resolution. So yeah, guys, that's the RTX 2070 all said and done for the Founders Edition card. Um, definitely glad to have this card, though, as I'll be including it in future testing on new games coming out and things, things of the like. So definitely good to just have this uh, in the roster of cards. If you were thinking about picking one up, uh, let me know down in the comments below if you have any interest in the RTX 2070, especially... You know, after seeing the performance numbers, did it perform about what you had expected? A little bit better, a little bit worse than what you were anticipating um, from this card. If you're going to pick one up, let me know down there. And uh, yeah, let's keep the discussion going as always down there as I look forward to your guys' feedback on the testing and everything like that, as well as the card itself. Definitely we'll be looking through the comments here as you guys start posting those. Hopefully right now, go ahead, post a comment. Do it. Do it. Don't feel pressured or anything, but do it. Do it now. Don't do a Tom's Hardware. Don't just buy it, okay? Make a, make a well-informed decision. Go watch many other reviews. Um, if you think it's worth picking up, then I guess good on you. Pick it up. I don't, I don't care. It's up to you, really, at the end of the day. If you want an RTX 2070, I'm not going to strong-arm you into doing it. It's your, it's your gosh darn decision. So don't just buy it. Just learn about it. And then perhaps maybe buy it. I don't know. I'm feeling weird right now. This video has gone on long enough. I'm going to get out of here. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Uh, if you did, don't forget to leave a thumbs up on it down below and subscribe if you're not already. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys tomorrow for another video. And later this week, we will get into 9900K benchmarking. That's the next big video coming up. And prior to that, I believe we're going to do a build video as well, including the 9900K. So stay tuned for that content in the very near future. You can always ring the notification bell. That way you don't miss it as soon as it goes up. And I'll see you guys then for another video. I don't know if it's going to be tomorrow, but the next day, who really knows? All right? Bye. Ta-ra.